Welcome again to another episode of my HSF audio blog. And this time it is about Carl Sagan's Cosmos. It's June the 30th of 2023. I'm on my morning MTB ride, taking a short break here to uh, briefly talk about this book. I, um, it took me a while to finish it because I was occupied with other things, um, but now um, I'm finished and um, so I think it was overall a good book. It's from 1979, I think, so um, it's over four decades old. It is about um, astrophysics. Um, Carl Sagan was um, at the time what you would call... Um, Influenza, influenza about um, space and astrophysics. Um, he had the gift um, to break it down to uh, quote unquote normal people to make um, this important topic, uh, this mind bending topic, accessible to the general public. Yes, um, keeping that in mind, of course. Uh, over four decades, um, there's certainly a lot of more, um, yeah, more discoveries. Um, the um, science has developed since then, but still, um, I think the foundations um, that he uh, explains in this book are still the same. Um, he also has. Um, yeah, kind of philosophical approach, uh, moral moral approach, and uh, yeah, after all, I think he was right. He was right with this. Just taking a quick break here. All right, so let's continue. <clears throat> um, the foundations are still. Uh, I think more or less right and um, so um, the latter third of the book this was um, most amazing to me because here he got uh, well specul speculations to be honest about um, multiple dimensions about white holes about um, it's the smallest and the largest scales in the universe and this was very fascinating to hear some educated guesses about these topics. Uh, it also has to be said that uh, in the end, um, in the last chapter, it's um, kind of an uh, overview um, about um, human development and evolution and uh, it's something called like um, who will represent planet earth and this uh, kind of uh, is the day of judgment uh, so to say in respect to nationalism and other uh, irrational ideologies like religion uh, basically human group thinking and I think he he was right, and especially even more today, as um, honestly um, we're still thinking in factions. We're not thinking about the human whole. Uh, it's kind of sad. How will we ever be able to conquer space with a mindset like this? The great filter will come like this. The very last thing I want to say. Um, the book is also a product of its time. Um, we have, um, so to say, the last vibes of the uh, space age, uh, the fading space age. Back at the time it was uh, the West, uh, let's say United States of America, versus the Soviet Union and they had the space race going on. Now, 40 years later, and there's some private enterprises like uh, SpaceX or Virgin Space uh, who uh, try to do industrialized um, space uh, faring 
but it's all kind of uh, in the early stages and uh, well we have uh, a new cool um, amazing um, space telescope um, James Webb but I don't know it feels like a, a missed opportunity uh, instead of um, you know investing into human future in space exploration the conquering of the inner solar system i humanity kind of uh, lowered its gaze down from the stars to the soil to territory nationalism madness like religion which should not have the place in modern society it still has i mean we even have the internet and kind of unlimited and free education and still we see that people follow easy ideas and yeah they don't think about the larger whole um the, we're about to trash planet earth see that's even it's a crime because we're taking no real steps to expand humanity on uh, other planets and at the same time we are ruining this pebble in the sky, this uh, pale blue dot that we inhibit here in, in our solar system. And maybe humanity deserves the great filter. Anyway, that's enough for now and yeah. I'll stop here. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.